Hey, this is Jonesy here, and if you're watching this video, you're obviously interested in converting your power wheels to remote control. Uh, what we've got here is a pretty cool build we just did or finished for a customer out in Texas, and he's got a one year old having a birthday on the 8th. Um, long story short, is we got contacted last week to build him a charger. But I told him that there's no way his son could drive it only being one years old because of how big this unit is. So what we did is recommended doing remote control. And what we do is use linear actuators, which is basically a robotics type linear servo, so to speak. And I'm going to explain to you why we use that option. You can get remote control ones, and I've already gotten some internet lip about oh you can get them um, cheaper already remote control well this is what you get this is a uh, big toys green country or best choice brand and this is remote control you get this little unit right here and here's the steering so now if you notice one thing the wheels when you turn them they pretty much stay where they are right well, if you take a real RC, like this 4x4 slash here, see how the wheels, that's a really wimpy servo, but um, basically it self-centers. That's what you want, so that you're not constantly fiddling with the steering going back and forth. Now, on this charger, we'll fire it up here, so you always turn on your radio first. And we wired this up so that it's on the key. So you turn it on, clicks on a 40 amp relay, and the steering, oh, I guess I'm not going to be able to steer with it on jack stands on the wheels. But basically, it self-centers. When you let off the steering wheel, it always goes back to center. Lucky that didn't fall off. That would have been a blooper reel. But this is what we've got. So it's a linear actuator. I'll probably snap some pictures and put it in this video too. But this is a Fergelli, or Fergelli, however you want to pronounce it, automations. And I'm going to go over to the bench here so you can see it's going to, every model is going to be a different one. Like this is a two inch stroke on our remote control Corvette over here. We used a four inch stroke just because that's kind of what worked out. So there are many different types of linear actuators. This is a cheapie off eBay. This is something you don't want. It's only got positive and negative so that it'll only go in and out. It won't sense when it, where center line is. If you look at these newer ones, see how it's got two sets of wires? These are for the potentiometer and these are to reverse the in and out stroke. So that's one thing you've got to, to um, keep in mind if you want to do this the right way. And also, here's the part number, and you make sure that you get the 40 or 35 pound force, not the 240 pound force, because it's too slow. It's, it's got more mechanical leverage, you know, in the gearing, but you want something that's fast and it doesn't really need a lot of power. So make sure you get that first. Now, it's not just having the actuator, you're going to need a radio system. And this is an Amazon cheapie. I think it was like 50 bucks. Uh, the actuator itself, I think shipped, it's like 180 bucks, something like that, 200, under 200 bucks. This is like 50 bucks delivered from Amazon. And then you're also going to need a speed controller. This right here is basically an RC and this is a dual motor. So it's really simple to hook this stuff up. The somewhat tricky part is the actuator control board. It's called a LAC or linear actuator control board. This is the option you are going to use. These instructions are online at their website. And right here in bold letters, do not connect the red wire because you don't want to power it from your battery 
and from your electronic speed controller you blow something up I don't know I I haven't done it so I can't tell you what would get destroyed but um, and what that is on this we've actually got the control board right here we've got velcro on it so we can tuck it up out of the way but um, that's where all your five wires go if it would focus for me it'd be great but it's this teeny tiny little unit it's I don't know how big it is it's pretty dang small but those are the components you're gonna need and in the description I'm going to leave all of the links to the actuator the control board the radio system and the ESC and all of these believe it or not I found on Amazon okay so as far as the ESC how to wire that into your remote control for the vehicle this is the ESC and it has an on off switch we left it in the on position because it doesn't see power until this relay which is wired into the key is wired up so if you guys don't have that wired into a keyed ignition you're gonna want to have this on off switch accessible so that you can turn on the speed controller after you turn on your radio so how it, what it has is it has its battery that you, you connect to whatever you're using lipo lithium iron phosphate lead acid we're using the stock 12 volt battery so we're running this basically on the stock power that it was um, came from the factory and then it has four motor leads so um, the two blue I believe are negative or pot and the yellows are positive it doesn't matter because they switch and on your radio itself you can also switch the um, throttle to reverse the polarity to the motors but basically you got four wires coming out because you got two motors and we didn't mess with the stock wiring so that basically when his son's old enough we can just remove the remote control components and plug it back into the stock batteries we just used um, female blade terminals and just slid them in so that we didn't hack up all that stuff um, this particular unit is a little bit difficult and it's way beyond what I can explain in this video because it's got this built-in charge port here and it cuts power to the ignition up there it, it just gets complicated a little bit so if you're just doing a normal RC conversion uh, you're gonna save yourselves a whole lot of trouble so um, so yeah we had a little bit more wiring to do than what normally happens in an RC build but that's the simple part right there so in the radio which we have the receiver up here it's as high as we can get it so that it doesn't get messed with but this comes with your radio set so you get your radio and the receiver and you have two inputs one is for the ESC which is simple um, it is even it's labeled channel 2 um, always remember one to turn two to burn if you guys are not into RC's that's how I've, I was taught it um, so channel 2 is for throttle channel 1 is for steering this is the the tricky part of RC um, conversion so obviously you can see this is way in the back of the vehicle and the actuator is way up here in the front so what you have to get and Hopefully I can find these and put this link in there too is these are just servo extensions and one's male and one's female and in the instructions it clearly shows where you put it you just slide it onto and I wish that I had a spare um, lack board but I don't so that I could show you guys but it literally slides on just like this right here pretend this is an actual board oh and that's about 40 bucks I think the board so it literally slides right onto this connector now before in the past I didn't um, do this because I kept it really close and this female end obviously isn't going to slide on so I just cut this off and you can actually um, put those into the crimp connector here where it, it's just it's a screw not a crimp but it's a screw and it says RC so the white one would go there you're obviously going to get power 
and I was going to do that, darn it. All right, so I went and uh, grabbed the tools I'm going to need to prep this servo wire, which you just need some little cutters, and I'm using a screwdriver here. It's my little technique that I use. So what I do is I just take the screwdriver and I just separate the three wires because they are connected to each other and this will make sense in one second. So basically what you need to do is you need to get rid of the power wire so that it doesn't feed from two sources. So it's really basic. All you do is get access to your red wire and you cut it and it doesn't matter where but I cut a couple inches off something like that so that all you're getting is its signal wire and the ground and then you can plug this into your linear actuator control board and that's an important step so you guys don't have to order more parts um, yeah you can you can um, cost yourself some extra money that's not needed so um, important step okay so here's the last segment of this video I figured I should put in um, kind of a, a view of this particular model and exactly what we did so we've got the 12 volt battery and um, I did want to go over some of the instructions for the the ESC it actually has ESC parameters in here it's got little dip switches there's three of them and right there you can alter it doesn't have an option for PB which is lead acid so maybe you guys are using lipo but you need to switch that one that's white up for lipo and down for nickel metal hydride and then the other two switches that are in white see in the circles there because it took me a little bit to figure this out so what they're referring to is the ones that are white that's the one that's for the battery the other one, depending on where you put those, is going to say that it's got forward, brake, reverse, forward, backward, or crawler, or boat. Obviously, we're going to leave it um, the way it is. So, I did not have to mess with anything, and those are kind of hard to find, but they're right here on the ESC. Uh, let's see if we can even see them. See, you can't even see them when I've got this installed, but they're down in here. So, um, what we did is we just took the battery leads, I'll walk you right through this guys, so there's the battery leads, and basically we just cut it, and we put a three-way splitter so that that's powering the rest of the vehicle so that when we remove the ESC, which is this one right here, it's all he has to do is disconnect this. Since he's in Texas, he's not going to be able to just swing it over so I can remove this stuff when his son's pipe three or whatever. So... We're trying to make this as reversible easily as possible. So we just spliced into it, and this goes to the relay. And when the key is turned on, it sends power to the coil, which sends power from the um, 30 terminal to the 87 of the relay, which gives power to the ESC. Um, and then, of course, negative is the same thing. We just spliced into it and sent power up on its way. Um, so we literally just put all three in this one because it didn't go to the relay so power up to the accessories power to that um, charge port and power to the esc and i think i've got all the details there guys i'm trying to help you out as much as possible and any questions go ahead and leave them in the comments below and look for more videos of this cool mini joker this baby joker in the future we're still waiting on the custom 3d printed wheels to come in so we can ship this out to texas anyways guys give us a big thumbs up and subscribe and any questions on it go ahead and leave them below all right guys thanks for watching all right real quick video of the dodge charger that we just built for a customer out in texas it's a little one year old and this used to be a police car and we deleted the police car